Right, so this is the last lesson in the um, the pack on differentiation two. So it's more parametrics, so these are going to be a little bit tricky, aren't they? So let's be careful what we're doing, especially on the last bit of the last question. So it says for the curve, so you've got your two equations, that's cool. So he wants the equation of a normal. Right, so we know for an equation of a normal, we need a gradient. Then we need to find its perpendicular. Then we need a coordinate. And then y minus y1. So let's do that. Let's follow that first bit of the plan to find the equation of the normal. Right. Okay. So dx dt is 2t minus 1. dy dt is 2t add 3. Now you can, because it says t is 1, it's up to you if you do it now or do it later. So you could work out what the t value is. So when t is 1, dx dt is just 1, and dy dt would be 5. So dy by dx would be 5 over 1. It's 5, or you could put it as 2t plus 3 over 2t minus 1 and then put your numbers in. But either way, you know that that's your gradient of your tangent when t is 1. Right. Remember, AQA, because it wants the perpendicular, AQA, like you, you say, writing this down, using m1, m2 equals minus 1. So that means that my gradient of my perpendicular is minus 1 over fifth. Perpendicular. Right, so I've got the gradient, I've got the perpendicular. Now I want the coordinates. So when t is 1, that tells us that x is 1 squared minus 1, well that's 0, and y is 1 squared is 1, plus 3 is 4 plus 1 is 5. So I know when t is 1, it's 0, 5. Right then, so I've got the coordinates and I've got the gradient. So I've got y minus 5 is minus 1 fifth x minus 0. Right, so if I times through by 5, I've got 5y minus 25 is minus x. Um, I might just leave that like that to be honest, it looks a little bit messy. Uh, I could have it as x plus. 5y minus 25 is 0. It doesn't matter. You could have it as y equals minus a fifth x plus 5 if you wanted. Right, now then, that's my equation of my normal done. It's not told me what form, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, to be honest, I don't even need to expand the brackets. So now it says find the coordinates where the normal intersects again. So I've got a curve and I've got a, st a line. Well, that crossed when t is 1 but it'll also cross somewhere else. So just like normal maths, we'd solve it. But we haven't got two equations to put equal to each other. This time we've got three equations. So what I need to do is put them into here or there. So I'm going to sub those in. It'll look messy, but it should give us two t values. t is 1 and t is another number if I've done it right. So I'm going to sub in. So my x is t squared minus t plus 5 lots of t squared plus 3t plus 1. Be careful now that I don't forget anything. Minus 25 is 0 there. Right, let's have a look. I've got 1t squared plus 5t squared. So I've got 6t squared. I've got a minus t plus 15t, so I've got plus 14t. This is when I think I've got it wrong. Uh, nope, we're all good so far. I've got 5 times 1 is 5. Take 25 is minus 20. That's a 0. I could divide through by 2, but then I'm going to put it in polynomial anyway. If I put it in polynomial, I get t is 1, which I've got, and I've got t is minus 10 over 3 there. It's a messy fraction, but it, it does the trick, doesn't it? Right, so I need the coordinates. So if I sub 
in t is minus 10 over 3. That will give me minus 10 over 3 all squared. I'm going to write it out, actually. Minus 10 over 3 all squared minus 10 over 3. That gives me <laughs> minus 130 over 9 there. For my y, it's going to be minus 10 over 3 squared plus 3 lots of minus 10 over 3 plus 1. So that gives me a y value of 19 over 9. So the other point of intersection is a little bit messy because of the coordinates. And in, the, in an exam, you might think you got it wrong because it's a bit crazy. But that's fine. That gives us a set of coordinates. Right then, let's have a look at example 2. So I've got x is t and y is 1 over t. So it says let p be the point with a parameter p. Ooh, these are dodgy. You put in t as p <laughs> and find the equation of a tangent at p. So it's an equation of a tangent. So I know I want a gradient and I want a coordinate. Okay. Right then, let's have a look. Um, right. With this one, I could actually just see y is 1 over x, couldn't I? And then just do it from there. But we'll, we'll do it fully. We'll do it with the other way around. But you could do that if it's easy to spot. Right then. So we want the gradient. So dx dt is 1. dy dt. Now remember, this is t to the power of minus 1. If you're really, really careful, because people put log t because they've integrated it instead of differentiated it. So that's minus t to the minus 2, or minus 1 over t squared. Right, so dy by dx is going to be... Now, actually, before I do that, I'm going to work out what it is when t is p. So dx by dt is still 1. But dy by dt is now minus 1 over p squared there, or minus p to the minus 2. Right then, let's have a look. So dy by dx is going to be minus 1 over p squared all divided by 1. So it is just minus 1 over p squared. So that's your gradient of your tangent. Looks strange because it's in terms of p. Now, there was like a, quite a tough exam question years ago where you had a point P and a point Q. Um, and you subbed them in. So you had like P comma 1 over P and Q comma 1 over Q as points. And it got really, really messy. But this is a little bit easier than that. Right, now then, let's, so I've done that. Let's find the coordinates now. So X is T and Y is what? Uh, X is P. And y is 1 over p. So I've got the coordinate p, comma 1 over p. My gradient, my tangent will be y minus 1 over p is, my gradient is minus 1 over p squared, x minus p. Now then, if a times through by p squared, so I've got p squared y minus p, expand the minus x plus p, Right, put it all on the same side. So I've got x plus p squared y. Take the p over, minus 2p is 0. It's messy, but that's the equation of the tangent. <laughs> to be fair, you probably could have left it just like that. Right, so then it says, if the tangent at p, which is this one, meets the x-axis at t, Prove that the distance from O to P is the same as P to T, where O is the origin. Right, okay. Let's have a think about it then. Um, right. So, if P meets the x-axis at T then t must be when y is 0. That's what that's telling us there. So y is 0 there. So we'll write that down. So t 